Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today might be one of my favorite flips. If you're new to my channel, I love to make crafts, to do furniture flips. In our town, we have a dump that has phenomenal items you can take or leave at the good table. And therefore, I do a lot of trash to treasures from those items. So if that's something you're interested in, today we are looking at several trash to treasures. And number one is a wooden cheese box by Cabot. Oh, only 10 or 15 years old, so it's not an antique. I had purchased one for $9, which was in much more vintage condition. This one I believe I got for free um, at the good table at the dump. So first things first, it is very splintery. So I did go ahead and sand that down and make that a little bit smooth. Then I started by putting a little bit of black chalk paint in a lot of water to make a wash of sorts, almost like a stain. Um, and then I did go ahead and just brush that on with a chippy brush. And um, once that was on a little bit, I took a rag to wipe some of that back. I didn't want it to be black black. I just wanted it to sink in to the natural wood a little bit to get me the feeling of a black stain. And so one coat of that was sufficient. Went around the edges, again, wiping that all back to give that that lovely stained look. I did not do the interior of the box, not certain what somebody would like to put inside of it. Although these days, I don't believe we are going to keep our cheese in there. <laughs> I am not sure. Um, a blanket um, or some you know, remote control. You could put some of those beautiful hairpin legs on it and turn it into a little bedside table or a little end table for the side of your couch. Um, I've seen people do that or just leave it on the tabletop. It's a little bit large for the tabletop, at least in my home. Um, again, I wanted to stain this. I was hoping to keep that Cabot uh, stamp visible. Um, I did go over this whole thing with the black stain and then ended up um, you know wiping that back and you could still see the cabot stamp a little bit through it not you know obviously as well as I would have liked but it's there so that was fun just for the history of it all even though like I said that's not even vintage never mind antique now I know you can get these at different places um, I would imagine in Vermont it's a lot easier to get a hold of or Wisconsin or places where there's uh, a lot of cheese available <laughs> but um, you may find them at your antique store or thrift store I see them at the thrift store and they generally run eight to ten dollars I think here in my location but uh, everywhere is different so if you have one of these or just a wooden box um, this would be a nice project for you to do this would also be really lovely with a brown stain underneath um, the last one that I did was in the browns and I loved it but I am trying to match this with um, a, a transfer that I want to use so next I am taking that muslin wrap latex wall paint and using a large chip brush to just go ahead and dry brush over the dry stain to give this a look that is not quite gray. I want it to look like it has gray undertones. And I like that look that is more of a, a antique -y kind of feel. So I just went ahead and gave that whole thing a good creamy coating. And then once that was dry, I did take this IOD transfer that I have been wanting to use and just put that on with this um, plastic stick that it comes with. Now, because this is a rough surface, even though I sanded it, it is still, you know, pretty rough. It transfers very well. Um, I find that raw wood and anything like this, um, that the transfer sticks very nicely to it. 
and um, once that was completely finished I just took the plastic that had come with it to just quickly kind of burnish that the edges of that a little bit just to make sure that it will you know stay down <clears throat> now obviously the best option here once you're done with that is to put a coat of a poly over it or a wax or something to make sure that that is going to stay although at this particular time I don't think that's going anywhere and then this is what it looks like on my gray ladder I really like the look of that gray tone with it I love these IOD transfers they do such a beautiful job this is very farmhouse has a twist of French but I think really all together just a really good look um, I think it looks really lovely on this piece it's a good fit for it and I think it would be cute also as I said as some kind of a tabletop I don't have any of those vintage hairpin legs I do love them and then here it is with just a blanket displayed so uh, that was project number one and now we are on to trash to treasure number two so this is a wooden box that I received from TD Ameritrade full of some goodies at Christmas time and I uh, wanted to keep that and use it but the idea of this video is for you to go ahead and just use something that you might actually have in your garbage or in your stash so anything that you have I went ahead and gave this a nice light sanding to make sure there were no splinters so that I could paint it um, if you have cardboard box and you want to try this I recommend Holly at Hot Humble Pie she has some phenomenal tutorials on how you can make cardboard look like wood with some mud or spackling um, from the wall and then um, you know use like a green paint on that so I would highly recommend you check that out here I'm just using some wood filler to fill in that and once that's dry I wanted to give this the, the uh, same wall color that I really really love that muslin wrap that is a latex paint I love using that in my home it is very farmhouse it is made by HGTV um, which I believe is a Sherwin Williams knockoff that I think is sold at Home Depot and this color is a perfect neutral because it's not too yellow it's not too brown and it's not too gray but it definitely plays nicely with all the other neutrals so if you're looking for a really good neutral tone in the cream i definitely recommend that muslin wrap so here i am giving this box two full coats of this uh, latex paint and letting that fully dry now if you want to use an iod transfer once this is dry i recommend you wait overnight or if you are not going to wait then to spray poly it or use a top coat and let that dry before you use the transfer so it doesn't lift up your paint um, also you do not want to wax underneath so if you're going to draw a uh, distress your piece um, with antiquing wax or what have you it's best to wait until after you put your transfer on and then go ahead and um, distress wax or what have you afterward and then once you're finished you know you can always wax the entire piece with clear wax if you want or poly it or whatever in this case I am not using an IOD transfer I am going to use an IOD stamp so uh, because I'm using ink on this uh, I can go ahead and use the wax first this I do like the fan brush when it comes to a little bit of dry brushing so that works really well for the edges and if you just want to do a small amount of the dry brushing that worked pretty good <clears throat> and then I want to go ahead and dry brush the entire piece to make this box resemble something that has been out in the barn um, or you know it's been hanging around for you know 40 50 years or whatever and uh, has sort of that little antique look so I start with the fan brush on the box edges um, as was recommended but I didn't love it and went back f for the 
um, the large chippy brush. The look that I was going for is definitely um, this look. So I just went ahead and ran over that one more time to give that whole thing that look. Then I take my sheep from the IOD stamps, the farmhouse stamps, and this um, sepia ink that I had put on it and then just hold it down and rub all over it and lift it up and there you go you get that beautiful transfer every time now I wanted to add some embellishment to this box and I had this belt and who wears a belt anymore I never wear a belt so I thought it would be really cute to add this but I want to stop for a second and show you what I saw on my way home from work today Speaking of sheep, look at these two baby lambs. Oh my goodness. I love bunnies and I love lambs. So anyway, back to this sheep. I went ahead and cut the leather belt, got some upholstery tacks, glue, and a small tack hammer. And I just added the portion where you, you know, fix your belt together there the buckle, the belt buckle, to the front of the box so that you could also grab it and open the box with that and then put the rest of the pieces of belt down over the sides to add that barn-like, rustic, farmyard look to this piece and um, just dress it up just a little. So I hope that you like that and get inspired. And now number three. Oh, this has to be my absolute favorite. These three bottles were given to my daughter. I believe they held gin once upon a time. If I think back to my much younger years, I think gin tastes like drinking a pine tree. So not my thing. But I love the color of these bottles. And they have the beautiful little ingredients on the side. So I wanted to keep that, get rid of all the labels, clean those out really good. And then I printed some beautiful graphics off of Graphics Fairy or one of the other free printable places that you can find graphics and took out my Mod Podge. I wanted to make sure that these graphics each had a touch of that blue in them. And once that um, was glued down. I went over the top. I don't mind if I have some wrinkles because I want to have a very old look here. But if you don't want wrinkles, you want to wait until the undercoat dries before you add the top coat. And then I went and printed some tags. These I just googled free tag graphics on Google and a number of different tags came up. You could switch it to birds or fairies. The fairies were really adorable. Um, birds, nests, any number of these little tags and these are nice and uh, you can put them on cardstock or this time I printed them on rice paper because I really love the way the rice paper looks. It's much easier for me to handle than tissue paper but tissue paper works as well. And then I found this on Pinterest. I could not figure out whether this was a free graphic or not. I couldn't find any place to pay for it, so I took it as a free graphic. Hopefully it is. Um, and then I sanded the edges once that was dry to give that a little bit of a rougher look. And then I took my antiquing wax and I just kind of, with a stencil brush, pounce some of that antiquing wax, rub and pounce, rub and pounce all the way around, especially the edges, um, to get that darkened and almost dirty looking. And then took a napkin, paper towel, and just um, wipe that away. And it tends to stick a little bit darker toward the outside edges. And if you don't want the middle or if you want to lighten it, you can always use clear wax uh, to take away some. But I really love that look. In fact, I wanted it to be a little bit darker on the outside edges. So I put it there and instead of rubbing it away, I kind of pounce a little bit so that it's just kind of more like, you know, dabbing 
to keep some of that on and then rub away some of the center to leave the outside edges darker. Already I am absolutely in love with these blue bottles. Makes me want to go get some gin. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but I don't know where else you could get these pretty bottles, but sometimes at the dump or other places, um, you know, you maybe already have a collection, but I highly recommend. Um, I Sometimes I see them at the dollar store, honestly. And then this is how those three came out. I am absolutely so in love with these. I am going to keep these and I'm going to use them in my bedroom because my um, bedroom has touches of this blue in it already. And I just love, love, love the combination of these items. I love the vintage look. I love the spring feel. I love the birds in the bird nest. I love everything about this. So I hope you love it. If you do, please let me know. And if you recreate it, put it on my Instagram page so I can see what you do. And now I am on to project number four. Project number three gave me an idea. My husband had given me these little tins that he picked up at Christmas tree shop at Christmas time for gift cards. So they come with a little thing inside and you stick your gift card in there and it says Merry Christmas or you know whatever it says on it. Um, but I obviously wanted to paint over these tins, especially when I remembered that I had so many of those beautiful little tags left over. And I think this is another piece you can certainly find in the trash. If you buy the little Mentos, no, Altoids, Altoids, whatever, those candies that come in these tins, great idea to save them. And once those were um, fully dried, I gave them two coats of the same color. I went ahead and I tore up some words and some other things I had gotten online, a piece of music tissue paper that I had, and I first Mod Podged those background pieces so that I, because the tags were just a little small and a little plain all by themselves. And so for me, I wanted to layer this a little bit, make it really look vintage. So I put that down with the Mod Podge, kind of with a rough tear on the edges. One, that rough tear works um, good for that wax if you're going to wax over it to pull that um, antiquing wax into the rough edges, making it look really vintage. But even if you're not going to, I just kind of like the look of that. Now, once that was done, I put the Mod Podge over the top of it, and then I went ahead and added the bird tag. And on the second one, I did this, I can't remember where I got this. I th think that I ordered this tissue paper on Etsy a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm not sure if you'd be able to find that. And then this one I decided I wanted to add the um, music tissue paper to the and this is tissue paper, not rice paper. It just happened to have come like tissue paper. Um, so I wanted to add that around the outside edge of one tin. Now, once those were fully dried, um, I went through my stash, stash that my daughter used to have in our scrapbooking stuff, in our jewelry stuff, and I had a bag of stuff, some that were very vintage looking, um, just really cute. So I pulled out anything that had words or birds or spring type things and decided to embellish one of them with that little lace ribbon. I made a little bow that comes from the dollar store and then a little leaf and a word adore. And I kept that one in the color that it was. I did not add any antiquing wax. Um, I wanted to give you a couple of options here. And then the second one, I made a twine bow with a key and a key lock that I had that I loved. And I wanted to adhere that first before adding the wax because I wanted to make sure that it would stick because uh, sometimes the wax will prevent things from sticking. So then I just took that antiquing wax and a little paper towel, went around and just antiqued that entire piece, just loving the way it grabs on to the, tear, the torn edges 
and then just put the cover on and that was that and oh my gosh again absolutely love this is trash <laughs> you're taking this out of your trash and it is absolutely adorable look at this tray of vintage items they're not vintage they're garbage but now they look like vintage items if i had a shop i would absolutely sell these and I'm sure that I could, but, well, of course, I'm not going to sell them because I love them too much and I'm going to keep them. But I could see why somebody would want to buy them. <laughs> so if you like them, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment so I know which is your favorite. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by.